Hey everybody, good afternoon. It is Thursday afternoon and what's kind of interesting is it's December, right? We're in the first week, almost end of the first week of December here and it, we are going into uh, the Christmas holiday season and hard to believe where the year's gone. It just has kind of sped by and you know all of a sudden here we are, winter, December, Christmas. It's crazy how, how time has gone this year but Hey, I am uh, I'm grateful for uh, this year and how things have turned out and for you as a coaching client and somebody who keeps showing up and, and uh, deliver helping me to bring out content and helping me to help you to grow. So today I want to just talk about goal setting uh, on the group call. This is Thursday afternoon. It's our typical weekly 230 group call. Uh, we'll probably have one more of these this year and then we'll uh, not meet again till the after the first of the year as we go forward. So the last couple of weeks, Christmas and New Year's week, we won't meet. But what I want to talk about is I want to talk about where you are right now and where you want to be. You know, how did 2021 shake out for you or how's it going to shake out for you? Are you still finishing up a few things that need to be finished up? And how do you move forward from here? What are your expectations, your goals for yourself? And we all put intentions or expectations on ourselves. What are yours for yourself? So you need to take inventory first. That's the first thing. You got to figure out where you're at today. What did you get accomplished goal wise? How much money did you raise? What were you able to accomplish uh, in your investment business, in your sales business, in your W 2 job? Uh, how about with your family and your personal life? You know, we have to always look at the five spokes in our life. And those five spokes, I think, are important because they're what drive us, right? But the first one is spiritually. So where are you at spiritually today? Uh, whether that be, you know, because you are religious and you're going to church or you have a relationship with Jesus or Buddha or Muhammad, however you are in your own life, what do you need to do now to drive yourself forward? And where do you want to be spiritually? Are you where you want to be? <laughs> I know sometimes for as much time as I spend in uh, scripture, spending time in prayer, meditation, I I'm not where I want to be. But I keep trying to circle back to that. I keep trying to go back to that. And then the next thing is physically. Where are you at physically? Are you where you want to be? You know, have you been saying all year, geez, I really need to lose this extra 10 pounds? Or have you been saying that um, I've, I'm doing well and I've been going to the gym uh, three times, four times, five times a week, whatever that is, are you getting up and going? Here's what I know right now, it's been really cold and you know, 12, 15 degrees in Chicago here in the morning, I get up, I don't really wanna go get in my car, warm my car up, drive across town to get to the gym. So I've been working out at home. Are you able to do that? Can you set yourself up? You know, can you set yourself up to do a good full body workout and work out at home? However, you are working on getting your physical activity in place and what's your goal for next year. So think about that. The next place is emotionally. You know, where are you at emotionally? Are you overreacting? Are you stressed? Are you, you know, I always say we have to operate between the lines, right? So if you had an equal sign. See, we have to operate between those lines. We can't, as soon as we start to go way too high or way too low, up and down from those lines, you uh, um, you you start to get out of out of sorts, out of control, right? And what I want to share with you is that we have to stay keep our our emotions in that space. When our emotions are in that space, we don't care about you know a lot of things around us, right? I don't really care what somebody thinks, whether they like me or don't like me. I keep doing what I'm doing. I keep doing me, right? And I keep building my business and you should do the same. So that's how we grow. That's how we move forward. Stay inside the lines. You get in a fight with your spouse. You get in, uh, you, you feel loss. You, something happens in your life. Stay within those lines. Too high, too low gets us off track. The next thing is mentally. Where are you at mentally? What have you been doing mentally to work on yourself? How about, are you reading? What are you reading right now? What books? What are you looking to read? What do you think you need to learn? You know, we all have that place in our life, what we need, what we don't know, and where do we have to go? 
And then the last piece is, uh, and actually two pieces left, but relationally, how are your relationships in your life? Have you been doing enough to go out and build relationships, new relationships? You know, this real estate game, there is, it's a relationship business. And how many, how many new relationships have you built this year? How many new relationships do you need to build this year to move forward? So how do we grow in that area? If you're struggling building relationships and you're not sure how to do that, reach out. Let, let's talk about it. Let me help you give you some guidance. You know, just this year alone, I've had 3,000 Zoom calls with people because I'm building relationships. I'm building a database. My intention is to, to grow the people around me so that I can open that database to you when you're looking to have, uh, when you need something in your business. And then, you know, how about your relationship with your kids or your spouse or your family? Where are those relationships at and what do you need to do to better those or work on those? And then finally is financially, you know, draw that line in the sand. Where are you at today? Are you where you wanted to be? Did you get to where you wanted to be? If not, what do you need to do differently? You know, one thing I know is that massive action causes massive results. And if you do what you need to do to move forward, you can get to where you want to go financially. So I talk about this piece, right? Drawing the line in the sand, take an inventory for where you're at, write all that down, take a look at it, take a look at those spokes, right? Spiritually, uh, physically, emotionally, mentally, relationally, and financially. Take a look at those areas of your life and write out where you're at today and where you want to go tomorrow. Then let's circle back and get clarity. Clarity is the next piece. Hey, listen, I can say I want to make a million dollars in my business and there's nothing wrong with it. Here's what I always ask though is, who do you become along the way to get there to make a million dollars? What are you going to do when you get it? Who are you going to go bless? Who, how are you going to give it back? How are you going to pay it forward? Because you know what, when it's always just about you, it doesn't make any sense at some point and it's harder to get there. But when it's based on focused on other people and how do we help other people, it helps. So what's your clarity? Why do you want what you want? What, what will that do for you in your life and how will that help your life grow? You know, people always say, oh, I want to be happy. I want more happiness. You know, I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but there's a distinct difference between happiness and joy. Joy is that feeling, that inner peace, that sense of serenity and security that we have within ourselves. And joy comes from maybe where you're at spiritually and where you're at physically. Do you walk around with a smile on your face inside? Do you feel joyful and happy like you have everything that you want or that you have enough to give back to somebody else? You know, joy comes from gratitude. It's a direct result of what we're grateful for today. So I challenge people all the time. Here's an interesting thought. I've been having this conversation with my sister lately, and I've been, been encouraging her to get a journal and to sit down and write out what she's grateful for. Just three things every day. It takes five minutes, right? But that's where we start that day. That's where we get that beginning of our day. And what are you grateful for? Hey, you know, I can say today, and I couldn't say this before, but I can say today that I'm grateful for my story. I'm grateful that it helps other people uh, learn as a result of the mistakes I've made. And how do we take my story and help other people grow as a result of that? So what are you grateful for today? What can you grab onto? You know what? Maybe it's just the birds chirping in the trees in the morning. Maybe it's the sunrise or the sunset. But write down every day three things you're grateful for and see if that doesn't start to change from inside and add some joy to your life. So when we start to get that clarity and that clarity is defined by where we want to go, how we want to get there, the joy along the way, who we can bless along the way, we start to get that clarity about our life and our direction. Now we can start to add those goals, right? at those goals and those dreams that those business plans of how we want to go there and how we want to get there. You know, I always talk to people about planning. So, Hey, if my major goal is to buy a hundred apartment units this year. Okay. So I just want to buy a hundred units this year. 
And how am I going to get there? Well, I could chunk it out, right? It could be 520 unit properties, could be 250 unit properties, could be 335 unit properties, right? So how do we get there? What's going to get us to that goal? And what do we need to learn along the way to get there? And I bring that up over and over again. You've got to grow personally to grow professionally. So if my major goal is to close 100 units and I work a business plan backwards and the business plan that I like to work is one, three, five. So underneath the, the one, I have three major steps that have to happen. My goal is to buy 100 units this year in the upcoming year. What has to happen? Well, I have to make sure that I have the good relationships in place. What do those relationships look like? Brokers that are going to send me deals, lenders that are going to give me money, uh, legal uh, uh, attorney that's going to help me with the legal aspect of things, maybe a couple partners in my uh, space, maybe a key principal. So when I have that one thing, the goal, 100 units, what are the three key metrics that I have to hit under that goal. And then underneath every one of those metrics is five key points. So let's say that that first metric, that first on that line of three is that I need to um, have great relationships. Well, what do great relationships consist of and how am I going to get there? I can tell you right now, it's going to be a lot more than just five uh, key steps along the way. You have to first designate what those relationships are. Who do you need in your life? Is it brokers? Is it lenders? Is it uh, insurance people? <clears throat> Is it attorneys? Who do you need and how do you have to go find those relationships? How do you outreach? Where do you network? Where do you find people that are hanging out that are in the space that you need to fill? And how can you help them? What can you do for them? Maybe another one of the metrics that you, you need to hit is you have to be able to uh, get a key principle, right? That's a big upper level relationship. Listen, if you're gonna go buy uh, a 20 unit, 40 unit, 100 unit building, you're probably gonna need a key principle. Somebody to come in, help you get that bank debt, help you get agency debt. Agency we know, right, is Fannie and Freddie, HUD lending, a uh, little bit, if you don't have experience in the multifamily space to get that, you're going to need help. You're going to need someone who has that. How do you find them? Here's what I did when I needed to find a key principal. I went ahead and I reached out to some people that I know who are extremely successful in the real estate space. And as a result of them being successful, what I went on to do was I asked them, I said, listen, I'm trying to put together a class team somebody that can help us scale the business 500 to 1,000 units. I need a key principal, somebody that I can go to. So now what I did was I got some referrals. Now I reached out and I went and talked to those people. You know what? Not everybody's going to be a match for you, but you will find people that are a match for you. And you start the conversation with them and you talk to them and you help, you get their help and you help them. And I always say in those relationships, especially those key ones, what do you need to know or what do you need to do for somebody else to help them grow? And then the third piece might be that you need to learn how to underwrite. Maybe you need to learn how to do due diligence. Maybe you have to underwrite enough deals. You know, I, I've underwritten over 150 deals in the last six months. We've written about 15, 20 LOIs. We've got one deal accepted and we're on the cusp of a second right now. So I always go back and I want to say, hey, how much work are you willing to put in? What are you willing to do to get to that place where you can be successful? So I want, you know, this is a lot of information today, right? I really, you know, people call, accuse me a lot of making people drink through a fire hose and maybe so, but here's what I want. I want you to be successful and I want you to be able to go out and do this business. My goal as a company owner, my goal with my core intentions is that I teach you what you need to do. I teach you how to fish and then help you fish and then let you go. 
right? Because we can all be successful. Every one of us has the right to be able to do what we want to accomplish to do. And it takes the initiative to go do it. You know, people say, why are you successful? I say, the only reason that I am is because I don't give up. You know, the only time we fail is when we give up. And I say, we don't give up. What you do is you keep pushing the ball up the mountain. You know, years ago, there was a, 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 a video that was put out by MIT. And it was almost like a, it was a stick man video, but it had a picture of a mountain and it had all of these crevices and, and landing places in it. And then there was this stick guy pushing this big boulder up the side of the mountain. And, you know, the, the captions that went by on the video were, were interesting because they talked about the struggle that we have and how you get closer to the top, it gets harder to push that. But then when you get to the top and you have that boulder, that big rock that you pushed up the side of the mountain sitting on the top and you look back and you go, wow, look what I've accomplished. And I want you to do that right now. I want you to look back over last year and take a look at what you've accomplished and how you've grown along the way and where you're at today as a result of pushing that boulder up the hill. I don't believe for any of us that this is easy. You know, people always say, well, I'm a self-made millionaire or I'm a self-made man or woman. I don't believe anybody succeeds alone anymore in the world. We have to have good teams in place. We have to have somebody higher and better than us. Maybe that's God, maybe that's Jesus, but we have to have somebody other than ourselves in, 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 our, in our space that we're leaning on. And then who are you accountable to? Who are you getting coaching from? Who are you learning from? You know, I wanna, if you're not having coaching, if you're not in an accountability program, I wanna sign up for that. I wanna be the one who helps you do that. One of the great things that I do with my coaching clients is I stretch them, right? And what I do is I, every week we get on the call and I stretch them. I actually had a coaching client today say to me, he goes, man, this is a stretch for me. I said, good. I said, that's where you need to be right now is you need to be stretching yourself because we get in these comfort zones. We get in these spaces where we don't feel like, uh, or we feel like we've accomplished it, or if we haven't feel like we accomplish it, how do we push ourselves forward? I, um, I have a friend who talks about what room are you in? And if you walk in the room and you know everybody and everybody comes up to you and asks you the question, is that really the right room to be in? Probably not. You probably want to be in a room that's a little bit more successful or that is more successful than you. I always say, I don't want to be the smartest guy at the table or the smartest guy in the room because I can't learn that way. I need to learn from people who are smarter than me. So stretch yourself, push yourself forward, put yourself in situations that are going to force you to learn, force you to grow, put yourself in situations that are going to cause you to uh, push harder, to push that boulder up the side of the mountain. Hey, listen, thanks for being here today. And I hope that out of this short session, you were able to get a little something. I'm looking forward to us resuming full lessons again, come after the first of the year. And really how, how I help take you, your real estate business, your multifamily business and move it to the next level. Thank you. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Remember, if you have any questions or anything I can do for you, don't hesitate to reach out and let me know how I can do that. Have a great day.